Okay. We're going to do um, a quick um, review or a quick, actually, preview of game theory. Okay? Now, the reason we do game theory in oligopolies is because there's so few firms, oligopolies are interdependent on each other. So pricing are strategic decisions that could affect the economic profits. So remember, all firms, like oligopolies in a market, are trying to maximize their profits. And game theory helps do that. So, we're going to just do it with two companies. There's three things that we like to get here. We want to go through the dominant strategy. We want to talk about Nash's equilibrium. And then the incentive to cheat. So, I'll just take that. The first thing I do is, this side, I circle, like I'd circle the 12, the 15, the 6, and the 8, to just know it belongs to Upton. Okay, that, that um, to me, helps eliminate some of the confusion. And maybe if I roll this up, we could look at it, and we might take it in a little easier. Okay, so notice, um, so like I said, I would just circle so I know which one belongs to Upton. Just like that. Okay? So, I want to see what Upton's doing. So, if rare air goes high and Upton goes high, rare air makes 12. I mean, Upton makes 12. If rare air goes high and Upton goes low, Upton makes 15. So, I'm going to put a check there. Um, it tells me if rare air goes high, what Upton should do. Now, if rare, if rare air goes low and Upton goes high, Upton makes 6. If they both go low, Upton makes eight, so I get a check there. So notice, no matter what rare air does, Upton should go low. That is a dominant strategy. The dominant strategy is the strategy you will use no matter what your opponent does. And no matter what rare air does, um, Upton should go low. Let's flip it. Let's look at what um, rare air should do. So if Upton goes high and rare air goes high, Rare air makes 12. Upton goes high and rare air goes low. Rare air makes 15. So I'm going to put an X there because that's the strategy rare air should do. Now, let's look at it the other way. Um, Upton goes low, rare air goes high. Rare air makes 6. They both go low, rare air makes 8. So now, rare air's dominant strategy is low. Because no matter what Upton does, rare air should go low. Now, in game theory, the dominant strategy, first of all, both, both companies don't always have a dominant strategy. Secondly, the dominant strategy isn't always the same. It just worked out that way here. Okay? So that's that. Now, Nash's equilibrium, Nash's equilibrium is the place where there is no incentive to cheat. It's not maximum profit, it's the place where there is no incentive to cheat. So, if I look at the where a box where I get an X and a check right here in the low, that designates Nash's equilibrium. No incentive to cheat. No matter what the other party does. So let's just say if rare air decides to go high, okay, um, rare air decides to go high and Upton stays low, Upton's going to make more money, Rare Air's going to make less, so Rare Air, no incentive to cheat there. Now, let me take us back here. What sometimes does happen is Rare Air calls Upton up and says, we're both making eight, but if we collude and stay high, we can make more. So let's just go with the high prices and make 12. But human nature sometimes takes over here. And what happens? One of them cheats to make the 15. So even though this is your max profit, it's not Nash's equilibrium because there is an incentive to cheat. Okay, we got a couple of practice problems that we'll hand out. Let's see if we get this. <laughs>